Hello everyone and welcome back to my Interstellar Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this episode, I decided to try and import the Normandy that I had made around Kerbin using three custom body parts that I had made in Blender and import it in here into Realism Overhaul. So here you can see me changing the fuels. I also doubled the size of it overall and so we had to resize all of the B9 procedural wing parts and the body as well and that tweak scale helped a lot and of course change it's all gonna be hydrazine that we're going to be using and I took off the outer engine pods and we'll replace it with something else because I figured out that those engines ended up too far below the center of mass to be useful here I am putting antimatter engines on I started off with plasma core engines but I ultimately decided to go with antimatter initiated fusion engines because those guzzle up the antimatter less and uh, give a reasonable amount of thrust the antimatter, uh, the plasma core engines give more thrust though. Here I'm adding our warp drives because we will once again try and use warp drives. I learned a lot about how to use them in the previous episode and hopefully this time it will be successful. We needed radiators and I wanted radiators that match the color scheme so I didn't want to put the graphene radiators, graphite radiators on these particular pods because those are supposed to be white not black and we can only find graphite radiators in black. So. Uh, that was uh, that's gonna be a continuing problem in this particular episode the whole heat issue with the radiators I added little fiddly bits on the front of those engine pods. I don't know what those do actually uh, Maybe they're antimatter collectors of some sort. I don't know uh, Maybe somebody else can tell me in the comments for the other pods instead of having engine pods I went with hangar bays but they're awful small. You can see uh, I try and fit a little pod in there, a fairly small pod, and it doesn't really fit. So not particularly useful. At the back there you might have noticed that I had added the antimatter initiated fusion engines as well as the appropriate generators. We are of course using thermal launch nozzles. The intention is to launch Normandy without any help, so no booster. It's going to launch on its own, so I'm trying to keep the thrust weight ratio above one. It's barely above one right now. And here I'm putting RCS thrusters uh, using hydrazine, not any of the fancy KSB interstellar ones. We'll see how this all works. Okay, here we go. We are going up, sort of. I don't want to test the aerodynamics here. I I think maybe a smart ESS could hold this because my wrist is not in the best shape. Thermal ramjets? Uh, and we don't stay in the atmosphere long enough to make that work, Ken Ken. Uh, my goal is to get through the atmosphere as quickly as possible. It's it's not worth the carrying the extra mass. They don't really produce enough thrust. I found. Okay, we should be good to start. I don't think Normandy had thermal ramjets. How do I, I mean, basically. I'm just gonna put that out there. We're getting a little bit hot. That's glowing a bit red there. Why? Why? I think our warp drives. That's that's the one that contains our warp drives. You guys, uh, you guys all right in there? Uh, our radiators are overheating. This is not good. Waste heat is low though. Oh boy. Ah. More uh I think our stock radiators just blew up. More parts are starting to blow up here. Also there are uh, wing pieces that seem to be overheating too. Even the lunar rated wing pieces. Buy myself some electric charge. That would be nice. Yeah, this thing has an interesting trajectory because it's not really going to gain in thrust to weight ratio over the course of its flight. So 
so I'm, I'm right now I'm learning about his trajectory uh, even though things are exploding we'll we'll get some I guess we have to get some electric charge in oh there it is total vessel mass 802 tons total warp power we only have 300 tons of total warp power right now hmm. uh-oh we've lost engines okay 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 so aerodynamically the Normandy seems to be handling it all right uh, that was nice to see of course if we try to come back down we saw in the stock version of this, well, uh, not stock really, the stock system, the Kerbin version of this, that doesn't really handle re-entry very well. And considering the thermal issues, which are quite evident right now, uh, re-entry is probably going to be worse because that's when the heat gets serious. Normally on launches in realism overhaul, you don't get heating. So if it's getting heating right now, there's no way it's going to survive re-entry. Uh, but yeah, the radiators were clearly not dissipating enough heat. Uh, we were in the yellow zone as far as the KSB Interstellar Thermal Helper and the VAB was concerned. And it's pretty clear that we needed to be in the green zone. The problem was trying to get enough panels on here to make it green while still maintaining the look that we lose a bunch of engines again. So yeah, that's the issue. One suggestion was to use graphite radiators in place of the stock ones I had on those pods to match the appropriate color. But the graphite ones don't actually have more thermal maximum dissipation than the stock ones, which was puzzling. And so, yeah, well, let's see that. Well, let's take a look at the numbers. Well, cooling seems to be going down rather than up. That's, well, but, but we're going through a peculiar region of the atmosphere anyway. Shut the engines by now? There's no way, we only have one minute to apoapsis and we, we're only at a thousand meters per second. We need to get to 7,300 surface velocity. We're not gonna make it at this rate. You can't shut down the engines. You're not gonna make it to sp uh, well, we're not even in space yet. We're not gonna make it to space. I can conclude that the graphite radiators did not help. It was not the case that replacing the stock ones with graphite ones was a good idea. The graphite ones might survive, but they're not dissipating enough heat. We're not even going to get as fast. We need it to be in green. We need to have the thermal situation be in green. To that end, I decided to try and put radiators well, everywhere I could without ruining the style of it. I was very adamant about making sure this still remained looking like the Normandy as much as possible, but we added some uh, radiators here. I didn't know what effect layering them would have. Well, the only way to find out is to try and launch it and see what happens. Oh, we're reaching 100% on those. Uh, it's happening again. More graphene. Let me turn the maybe it. Oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'm just gonna ignore the fact that it's all exploding. Um. I can turn the body of the Normandy into radiators, maybe. Let me see what the stuff for the graphene... Let's see... Conformal radiator. Let's, let's pretend it's a conformal radiator. Emissive constant? Well, I've got a pretty high emissive constant already. Radiator headroom. Well, I don't know what that is, but that sounds interesting. Alright. We will give them radiator headroom. Um...
That's funny. Uh, the conformal radiators have two different emissive constant statements. That's probably a mistake. It says emissive constant equals 0.98 and then emissive constant 1.0. I'm deliberately sending up, uh, sending it up a little higher than before. Uh, I think this is where we need to stop that. Stealing heat from the reactor. I don't know. I mean, it's operating as it should, really. It's just that it has a low heat tolerance. It's actually cooling off now. Uh, now we can fall down. We could probably coast to apoapsis here. But more things are heating up as we throttle down. Because the engines aren't spewing the heat out. I think. Let's just shut down and see what happens. And then we wouldn't have to run them. Yeah, it needs more graphene. Let's, uh, let's see if adding heat dissipation to the body of the Normandy is good enough. So unfortunately I'm gonna have to restart again. That'll also include the fixes from from Andrew on uh, RSS Constellation. Ignition. And launch. Here we go again. Yeah, I mean, we tried the... Previously, we had tried the other antimatter reactor, the plasma core or whatever it's called. That one produced a lot of thrust to weight ratio, but guzzled up the antimatter like nobody's business. Will it finally make it this time? I don't want to see a single red part, I'm warning you, Normandy. A series of antimatter initiated happy little accidents. Quick save and then fizz warp. Why would I want a fizz warp? I like the look of this. This is good. Look at this. This is classy. Spinning takes a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Actually, magnetic boots are probably better than spinning because you do need a little bit of mass to to uh, make the whole spinning thing work. Uh, well, I basically turned the whole body of the Normandy into a big radiator, red ass folk. I actually need to tone it down a bit. Okay, we need to get higher up in order to light our warp engine. I want to try the warp engine. Let's start charging the warp engine. I don't know if the warp engine is going to work or not. Yeah, I overdid how much... How much I allowed... For, uh, how much uh, radiation... Uh, well, radiator dissipation I put on the body. I mean, after all, I created these three parts, so I should get to decide how much radiation they can handle. Or radiator dissipation, whatever you want to call it. Um, start charging. Warp power to vessel mass too low to create a stable warp field. Ouch. Yeah, let's just boost up. I mean, that'll use up some of our fuel. I think I'm gonna have to make it lighter and add more warp coils. 
I'm gonna go to escape and then try and try the warp drive again. Uh, yeah, but as far as Expanse is concerned, you probably don't need the other star systems like in RSS Constellations. Uh, what you need is probably RSS Expanded if that's updated or not, I don't know. But uh, definitely for the Asteroids you need RSS Expanded and Ceres. You need Ceres. Okay, we are, we are on escape. Um, let's time warp till we're uh, higher up. Yeah, if you haven't played Mass Effect, it's probably fair if you don't want to play Mass Effect 1. I like it still, but maybe Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3. But it's just a beautiful thing to really have a feel for commanding your own starship. It's really quite amazing. Walking around, talking to your crew, that sort of thing. Big fan of that. Not enough games have that, where you have a, you know, a substantial crew you have to take care of, and you're walking around your ship, and doing space things. Even space mining in Mass Effect 2, though, people don't all like that. Ultimately, I concluded that we needed more warp core power, and so I sized up the warp cores. Incidentally, in order to put the radiator on the body of Normandy, I copied the stats for the umbrella radiator part, and that turned out to be a little bit too overpowered, so I would eventually turn it down. Just hold it right there. Okay, hopefully that's good enough. Alright, activate warp drive. Maybe? Um, game is paused. Will something good happen? I don't know. No! Why? 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 Needs more struts. I don't think there's any strut that's gonna survive 3 million Gs. So what happened there was I had on part G-Force limits and uh, obviously other G-Force limits because this is supposed to be realism overhaul anyway, so it was natural to have those limits on, but obviously not useful in this case. Okay, we can definitely warp now. Okay, uh, start charging. So if I click a random one, it doesn't give the charging option. Only, one, only the front one actually gives us these options. So they're all sort of coupled together. Okay, here we are, pointed at Mars. We're going, we're going! 0.4 times the speed of light. We're increasing our warp speed. We are now going at the speed of light. We have a Mars encounter. Let's go faster. 1.6 times the speed of light. 48 minutes, too slow. 2.5. Four times the speed of light. Oh wait, we came out of warp. Dang you, why did we come out of warp? 
No! Come on! Start charging. Oh, it, it goes up. Oh, we broke warp because past the speed of light. The warp, the power required for warp increases. I see. So the best warp we can do is warp 2.5. That's why we came out of warp. Warp 2.5 is the best that the Normandy can handle. Okay, 30 minutes to Mars. First time we're doing warp in this. And this is the first time I've warped to Mars, too. Yeah, Normandy. Well, this is why Normandy needs to use those gates, right? Okay, uh, deactivate warp drive. We're now out of warp. So how much would it take to get into orbit? Well, we're very far away from Mars. Wait. Um, this... Hold on. Doop, 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 doop. How do we get this far away from Mars? Hmm. We're going too fast. This is going to be the trick, by the way. The trick isn't getting to places. The trick is slowing down. We had too much residual delta v uh, uh, velocity. Hmm. Warp towards it again? It won't change our residual velocity, I think. But maybe, let's see if that's a good idea. Who knows? Your guess is as good as mine. Okay, so... We have to select a target. Let's... Let's select Deimos. Fine. It's a good reference. We're still pointed towards Mars, actually. It looks like we can do arbitrary warp, so let's start charging. But I don't want to go so fast. Maybe just warp uh, one time the speed of light. Towards backwards, it won't. It won't do work that way. We'll continue. We'll continue to have the same velocity whether we do it forward or backwards. No, you can't warp. warp warping retrograde will just shoot you out away from it. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, maybe getting closer to planet. Maybe getting closer to the planet would require less delta v to slow down. Yeah, you're right, Juan. So let's see how close we can get. Or maybe I should just wait. I mean, I don't know. It's because we had this residual velocity that we're being shot. I uh, see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I think I'm getting the picture now. Anyway, let's time warp a little bit. We need to. We need to cut our warp drive at periapsis, not where we were before. Yeah, out of warp I keep drifting with the same vector I had leaving Earth orbit. We also might not have enough Delta V to do that. Okay, let's try this. Uh, deactivate. Uh, okay, that's closer. Um, I don't know. This is this is rough. 8,637, basically. That's how much it'll cost. Well, that means that if we go to Jupiter, it might work out. Let's go to Jupiter. Wait, we're basically pointed right at Jupiter already? That's pretty impressive. Yeah, I guess from where we are, Jupiter's not very different from the direction of Mars. No, I won't let you skip off of the atmosphere. It pulled us out of warp. Okay, let's try again. Good times. Increase warp speed. 
and we know our max is 2.5. Here we go. Um, Mars escape in three seconds. Okay, we've passed Mars escape. Jupiter encounter in one hour and 58 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, I'm... I'm trying to use Jovian gravity, yes. Hold on. Our periapsis is not close enough right now, though. Okay, we should come out of warp here. Should come out of warp here. Deactivate warp drive. Okay, um, we need to point at, let's say, a moon of Jupiter. Warp close to Jupiter. Let regular physics kick back until you're out of e SOI. Warp back into the SOI. Let Jupiter's gravity keep you close. But your vector is still going to be the same. Let's set Io as a target. I'm not understanding you, all right. But I have been streaming for almost eight hours. If you keep doing that, Jupiter's gravity will slow you down repeatedly. There's something very disconcerting about this idea. I don't know. I don't like it. I prefer to, to be constrained by some planning. I would like to do it right instead of being all haphazard about it. Okay, let's try this again and hope we don't smack into Jupiter. Maybe... Warp... Just, just one times the speed of light will do. I don't know how close we can get with the warp drive. Oh, so we're angled like that, huh? We might actually smack into... I don't know. That, oh, yeah. Well, we've got... We've got an Io periapsis. Our periapsis around Io is... Not being revealed to us. Hmm. Okay, we are now out of warp. Let's see what the situation is. We're in orbit around Jupiter! Auto orbit! We have made orbit around Jupiter. We didn't even have to do any burning. We were at the right velocity. It's a weird orbit around Jupiter, granted. Not the most useful Jupiter orbit ever. I wonder how, mu uh, how much it would take to flatten it out. We're also retrograde, which is not the greatest thing ever. It'll take a lot to flatten it out, apparently. Just mind those Jupiter moons. We'll have a heck of a time hitting them the way these are going. We're going the wrong way around. See, they go that ways. We're going this way. We've got this inclination. And they don't have much gravity. So there you have it. It took an eight hour stream to get it right, but we finally got a successful warp drive ship. We warped to Mars, did not make orbit there, but also warped to Jupiter and did make orbit. Two day mission so far for the Kerbals and a very nice looking Normandy, if I do say so myself. So on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.